This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Just like the last time, I've ordered my boards from PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. Just like always, the shipping was super fast and everything came safely packaged in nice cardboard box. PCBWay provides all of the resources that you will need to complete this project. You can order PCB prototypes, fully assembled electronic boards, high quality 3D printed parts and even injection molded parts if you need that high end quality. So if you want to make the stuff that I do but don't know how to solder or you don't have the 3D printer then you should definitely check them out. This time I will be using a super tiny gyroscope module that will work perfectly with this device. As you can see I've ordered a absolute ton of those boards and the total cost for 40 pieces was only 5 bucks so the PCB prices are super low. As you can see the PCB quality is super impressive. You can see all of the traces clearly and blue solder mask makes the whole thing look super professional. Ok so let's take a second to assemble the board. Of course I will do most of the work off screen so that I won't bore you to death. The whole assembly is super simple. The component layout is pretty much the same as in regular MPU board. So I will simply transfer all of the parts. And here is the finished gyroscope. It's absolutely microscopic. This is the front piece. It's a simple 3D printed part that will hold the tracking LED in place and will close everything up. I've also designed this small 3D printed resin ball that will work as a simple LED diffuser. This is what it looks like after removing all of the support material. The tracking LED goes directly inside of it. I will be using a simple blue LED light that when combined with the resin ball will make it possible to track the headset in VR space using PlayStation Move cameras. The whole assembly goes directly inside this slot right here. It's a pretty tight fit so definitely avoid using too much force. You should also bend the LED pins to make them as close to the plastic part as possible. And now you can install the gyro board on top of the plastic. The gyroscope board should be mounted directly in the middle, right below the tracking LED. You can use a piece of double sided tape to make the whole process way easier. The tape will hold the PCB board in place from the bottom and from the above I will use hot glue to secure it in place. But before I do that, I will connect the tracking LED directly to the gyroscope voltage pins. I've used short Kenner wire pieces that won't interfere with the plastic parts at the later assembly steps. After that, as you can see, I've used a bit of hot glue on both sides of the gyro board. In order to connect the front electronics with the rest of the headset, you will need a short 4 wire cable, like for example USB. You start by cutting off both connectors. Now that you have the 4 wires visible, you can thread them through the plastic case. And now that the wires reach the electronics, grab your soldering iron and make some connections. I will use the black and red wires for the voltage and other one for the data. Here you can see my connections. Red wire supplies the 5 volt, black one goes to ground, green one to SCL and white one to SDA. Now let's assemble the visor. This part consists of couple of pieces, mainly the visor part which you can now see on the screen, two small strap knobs and two very long flexible PLA straps. The assembly process is super easy. You basically grab a knob, thread it through the strap and screw it into the visor part. And now the visor assembly is pretty much finished, at least for now. And now for the most difficult part, the 3D printed headband. This assembly has couple of 3D printed parts that in order to work have to move freely. The main moving part is that yellow gear that makes the straps go in and out. Of course there is also a driver board cover as well since the main display board goes inside the headband. You will also need a ribbon cable that is separate from the one inside your display. I already bent it for easier installation. Ok, so let's first focus on the biggest piece. First thing you want to do is grab the visor part with straps attached and put the straps into the headband. Each strap has its own slot so that they won't collide with each other. Now make sure that both straps align with the center hole. With the straps aligned you can now insert the main gear. Make sure not to damage any teeth in the process. 
With the gear in place you can now attach the main knob. It goes directly into the hole on the center of the gear. And now you can attach the gear cover from the other side. The gear cover is this big round piece with self-tapping screw hole directly in the middle. Basically the self-tapping screw goes into the hole and screws directly into the gear. Make sure that the cover is directly in the center as the self-tapping screw can easily slip and go on the side. The gear cover sits slightly below the plastic part so that the driver board won't get in the way. And now you can test it out by rotating the knob. You should notice the straps go in and out of the headset. And now for the driver board itself. This is the stock driver board which comes with the display, so if you buy this display it should fit perfectly well inside the plastic part. Now what you wanna do is carefully thread the ribbon cable through this slot right here, it's right above the strap. The ribbon should come out on the other side, but only slightly. And now we can install the plastic cover. The cover goes directly on top of the driver board and once again I will melt both pieces together. And just like that the strap assembly is now finished. You can try putting it on your head to see if it works. So for this build I will be using those small round screens available to buy on AliExpress. Thankfully they come with all of the necessary electronics. I will show you how to combine them with the plastic frame but I've already used a double sided tape and I was afraid to break them when removing them for the video. The whole thing is super easy to assemble. You basically print the plastic frame Put some double sided tape on it and glue the displays to the plastic frame. Of course you will also need the ribbon cable as well. I've bent mine at about 90 degrees so that it will come from the side on the headset. After connecting the ribbon cable you simply secure the small green board with two self tapping screws. And now the display module is pretty much finished. Of course you should remove the protective film at this point but I will leave it on since I will use the displays for my different projects. Alright, so now let's assemble the optics. For this part you will need this black plastic piece which holds the lenses in place. You will also need these ring pieces as well as those hold second layer optics. As for the optics themselves, I will be using two Fresnel lenses for each eye. This will make the FOV way bigger and whole assembly will be way smaller. You start the lens assembly by inserting the bigger lens directly to the big plastic piece. Make sure you put it in such way that the smooth part of the lens goes towards your eye. The lenses should go inside pretty easily and you should hear a tiny click sound. Now at this point you should clean your lenses using wet wipes for glasses. You have to clean it only on the inside part. Now let's assemble the second layer optics. This part is pretty easy as well. You simply pop the lenses into the plastic rings, smooth side towards the top. And now you should be ready to combine both lens layers. Now let's take a while to clean the second layer optics as well. Once again, this has to be done at this point only from one side. Now that we have everything set up, we can combine both layers together. This part is a bit tricky since lenses can fall out while pushing the smaller unit into the bigger piece. Make sure to take your time and do this step carefully since even the smallest wrong movement in one of the lenses falling out after combining both pieces, make sure that the, all of the plastic parts are on the same level and everything is flat. Now you can properly clean the lenses from both sides. And now the optic module is pretty much finished. Now let's grab the display assembly and put the optics on top of it. But before doing so, make sure to clean the panels as well. It should be noted that you shouldn't really touch the displays with your bare fingers after cleaning them. This could result in smudges. And now you can finally put the optics on top of the panels. Both pieces are held together using four self-tapping screws. It's a delicate piece, so make sure you are not using too much force. And now the main part of the headset is pretty much finished. You can connect it to your driver board and check if everything is working fine. As you can see, I've connected it to my PC with HDMI cable and you should now be able to see my Windows desktop.
The resolution isn't super great, but at this price and size you won't get anything better. Now let's assemble the front cover with the display. It's basically combining two same sized pieces into one bigger piece. Absolutely nothing complicated at all. You start by sliding the ribbon cable through that thin slot on the side of the plastic cover. And now it's finished, just like that. Even the Gorilla Tag kids can do it. Now that we have all of that done, let's combine the strap assembly with the display unit. This is super simple as well. You simply put the visor part on top of the display. There are no screws for those parts, so I will simply melt both pieces together. It almost looks like a proper headset now. Of course there are still some things left to be done, like this annoying ribbon cable and data cable for the gyroscope. For the facial interface, I've decided to 3D scan my own face and make the 3D printable piece based on that. Here you can see the 3D scanning results, which is basically a face reveal at this point. Next I've grabbed the visor part and put it over the 3D scan. And then I've simply cut out the 3D scan out of the visor part, which gave me this piece. Next I've 3D printed it in regular PLA and even though it's not soft at all, it's actually super comfortable. After all of that, I've put it on top of the visor part and melted both pieces together, which gave me a solid connection. Of course the connection still needs some kind of cleanup. So I've did exactly that using my knife. It's far from perfect, but it holds really well and you won't notice it while playing. As you can see, I've had to modify the strap a little to accommodate for the ribbon cable bending. I've added a couple of plastic pieces that will guide the ribbon cable outside the strap when you tighten the whole assembly. It's not a perfect solution since you still have this bulge right here, but there is nothing better that I can think of. I will also have to modify other pieces as well to add the support for the data cable. While new parts are printing, let's talk about the Raspberry Pi. This will be used for the communication with your PC. I actually have two versions of this board and one of them has a USB-C connector. I will use this one since I feel like the USB-C is way nicer. I will connect the voltage wires to those pins right here, which will supply enough voltage for everything to work. After soldering the wires, you can connect the board to your PC and check if there is voltage. As you can see, so far everything is working fine. Ok, so later on, I've actually decided to add a small cable guide right around here. I've printed out this small plastic piece, which will be directly attached to the top. Of course, when you download the files, this guide will be already added in. As you can see, the whole assembly works way better with the cable guide. So I think I will have to add the cable guide on the other side as well, and maybe on the strap itself. I've prepared this small plastic piece, which attaches directly to this piece right here. The cable path looks way nicer now, and it gives headset a proper shape. For the rear cable guide, I've actually had to redesign the whole rear strap assembly. The old one was missing the Raspberry Pi mount, so everything turned out ok in the end. I threaded the data cable like this, which will make the Raspberry Pi soldering way easier. Unfortunately, the MIPI driver board USB connector slightly gets in the way. I think I will have to simply remove it, since the voltage will be coming from the Raspberry Pi either way. Ok, so I successfully removed the USB connector and whole thing still works. Now all of the plastic pieces are closing up perfectly. With all of that done, it's now time to solder the Raspberry Pi. I've soldered the voltage wires to the data cable and connected them directly to the display driver board as well. This way I will have to use only one USB cable. As you can see, both sides of the headset are getting power. The tracking LED is shining bright and there will be enough power left for the displays. The gyroscope wires go to the pin 4 and pin 5. I've uploaded the gyroscope identifier code and as you can see it's working. After uploading the Hades VR firmware, my headset is now working with Steam. As you can see, it recognizes the headset movement. Ok, so now pretty much the last part left is the foam for the back of the headband and maybe some kind of plastic cover for the Pi. I've did the Pi cover first, since it's basically a simple plastic square. For the rear foam, I will be using one of the cushions that comes with cheap phone headsets. This one is pretty comfortable 
and shape wise it looks like it might fit well. Of course I will have to cut out those straps on the side since those will only get in the way. And here is the foam after cutting, it looks pretty clean. As you can see it fits nicely on my 3D printed strap. Of course I will have to apply some kind of adhesive to keep it from falling off. I've decided to use hot glue but you should be fine using double sided tape. And just like that the whole headset is now finished. It took me forever to make this video and I'm glad I'm actually done. Thanks for watching everyone and hope to see you in the next video. Once again thanks to the PCB way for sponsoring this project. Make sure to check out their services since I really recommend them. And of course just like always huge thanks to my patrons. See you later and goodbye.